The internet is heartbroken after hearing about the Ace family's divorce. Catherine and Austin McBroom are no more. But the question is why and what did Austin do to Catherine? Let's find out together. So what I want to say is that People are saying we broke up. So ladies and gentlemen, as you probably already heard, Austin and Catherine are having a divorce and I couldn't sleep last night because of it. And after hearing about this news, everyone's surprised, but also at the same time, not so surprised. I mean, Austin McBroom is a fool after all. I mean, the guy runs a family channel on YouTube, but hits up only fan stars offering to manage them. You couldn't go more the opposite way if you tried. From creating family friendly videos to managing sexual content. Austin McBroom is a fool and I said it, it's true. <laughs> you like that, Jerry? I knew it, sir. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to unravel all the details in this video. So sit back, get comfy, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. I've been replying to every single comment I get on the last couple of videos, so you'll probably get a response from me. And of course, for all you newcomers, say hello to Jerry. This is Sir Jerry. And that's Cliff, but... We, d we don't talk about it. With that said, later on in the video, we're going to be talking about all the antics Austin has gotten up to, which probably led to their divorce. But for now, let's read the post from Catherine McBroom. As I start this new year, I will challenge myself in ways that I have never done before. 2024 will be my year of transformative change. And with this taking place, one of the steps in my journey is the difficult decision to leave my marriage. We have mutually agreed to a divorce and will part amicably. Our past as a couple have shifted and have created challenges that are irreconcilable. This decision comes with a very heavy heart. As heartbreaking as this is, I also feel liberated. I spent the last few years prioritizing my children and honoring my commitment to my family. All the while I seem to be losing myself and my own personal happiness. Our main priority is to stay united as parents and to continue creating a stable, happy and loving environment for our children. Thank you for all my supporters giving me a safe space to be able to use my voice and share our love. I love you all so much and I'm beyond grateful for all the support we've received from you throughout all these years as a couple. And Austin, you're my best friend and that will never change. Now obviously let's not ignore the obvious, okay? It's very sad, right? There are children involved and it's never nice to see uh, a couple break up, especially when there are children involved. I wish both of them the best on their journey on life and I hope that they all find their own happiness. But people are definitely suspicious that it was both of their idea to end the marriage. People actually believe that it was Catherine's idea. Which would make sense after all the dodgy stuff McBroom has been involved in. And I do understand, you know, if a marriage is not providing you value and helping you grow as a person and you've tried every possible thing to work it out and it's still failing, the only thing left to do is get a divorce. Especially when there are children involved because you want them to grow up in a happy environment. Not an environment where there's constant arguing and negativity. But I'll tell you what, right, some of these fans are wild. Listen to this. Fans were shocked to hear the news. I don't believe in love anymore, wrote one person. Don't believe in love, because a couple of influencers are having a divorce. What a load of nonsense. But I do understand the comment, because now I don't believe in love. Catherine and Austin were just the power couple. They had the most true, divine, spiritual love you'll ever see, despite Austin's infidelity. But despite the jokes, infidelity doesn't really place a positive energy or growth on the marriage. I mean, have you ever broken glass before and tried to sell or tape it back together? It will never be the same as it once was. Now, Austin McBroom also came out with a statement. His was after Catherine's. Catherine's posted her first, and he said pretty much a similar thing. Let's take a look. He posted this picture of both of them loving each other up. Oh, he's probably missing already. Bless him. Shouldn't have put your willy in another woman then. For this new year, I'll be taking a leap of faith. I've made the hardest decision of my life, the decision to close the book on my marriage. We have mutually agreed to a divorce and we remain the team when it comes to our kids. We created one of the greatest stories, almost a decade together. So many memories, so many accomplishments, but every book comes to an end. And now we will be writing a new book as separate authors. We both understand the holding on is believing that there's only a past and letting go is knowing that there's a future. And we are both supporting each other's future. This transition is not easy, but we are both making it as easy as it can be for our family. We will continue to be the best parents to our kids. Separations are difficult, so you will see how we push through these difficult times as a unit and keep influencing with love and positivity. With that being said, 2024 will be life-changing for me. I will be dedicated to myself, my kids, my health, my body, my mind, my spirit, and God. Thank you to everyone who has supported us through our journey and will continue to support us moving forward. We're going to need even more of your love and strength during this time. Well, with that being said, I hope you pray to God for forgiveness for your sin of infidelity. But as you can see, it's pretty much exactly what Catherine said, just the words a little bit switched around and he put some poetry in there about writing their own books as separate authors. But now let's get into the reason why I think Catherine was the one who called on the divorce. First things first, Austin McBroom is not exactly the greatest person to exist. There was allegations of him cheating on his wife, which is obviously the dumbest move in history. You had a great family, a great wife, and may I say a life partner who was literally double teaming the whole career with you. You guys worked together as a power couple, and yet you decided 
to do some naughty sussy backer stuff. Now, a few years ago, Tanner Moji came out with some allegations towards Austin, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm very confused. You know, I, I don't think I was around for this, but let's just take a look at this video. And it's Austin bawling his eyes out and Catherine absolutely screaming, holding this lipstick inside of their car. And she's screaming and she's like, it's the lipstick, Tana's. Austin says the lipstick, Tana's, blah, blah, blah. Austin's bawling. My dumb ass thinks that the right thing to do at the time is save the kids, save the kids. So I lie to Catherine. I'm like, this is my lipstick. It wasn't my lipstick, Catherine. I'm really sorry. But we team Bryce out here on God. So. <laughs> Another time Austin hired four of my friends as his nannies and when Catherine would leave he would sleep with all of them and then told her that they were all his nannies and it was a fake nanny company. Wow. That is just you know wild. Me? Tiring fake love nannies just to destroy you when your wife you know leaves the house. I mean, that's just true love, isn't it? They were just all a power couple, so that you know? I mean, he obviously loves his wife a lot, you know what I mean? And to extend on that, Tana Morgia also posted this tweet. One time, Austin McBroom was cheating on Catherine with a random bitch, and she left a lipstick in his car. And the next tweet about the fake nannies, man started a fake nanny company to cheat, LMAO. I don't think these rumors were ever debunked, and I'm not sure if they were even confirmed, but that is wild. Starting a nanny company to cheat on your wife. This divorce should have happened a long time ago. God, as soon as this happened, as soon as this was heard and it was confirmed, you know, behind closed doors, this relationship should have been over straight away. He did respond to this and say, cap to the biggest clout chaser of them all. And it was actually Erica Costell's lipstick dummy. I was taking Jake and her back to Jake's house. This lame as lie ain't gonna save the attention that your little BF Bryce is about to get for his ass whooping. But I don't think he ever responded to the nanny comment, so who knows? But I think everybody knew these guys were going through a difficult time because they haven't uploaded in their channel in like a long time and they announced that they were taking a break from YouTube. So, I mean, this was kind of expected at some point, but also unexpected, if you understand. Expected because of the kind of man Austin McBroom is, but unexpected because of Catherine's intense loyalty to him. But aside from his infidelity, surely the man is clean. He hasn't done anything wrong, right? I mean, he can't have done anything else. Well, that's where you're wrong. Austin McBroom actually ran a charity event at a basketball game with Chris Brown, and all of the money that he got from it, the question is, what did he do with it? A, did he donate it to the charity and be a nice man? B, he didn't donate it, kept it for himself, and scammed everyone. Or C, he bought an AK-47 and gunned down Tanner Mojo. Well, if you said C, you were wrong. The answer was actually B, you know, allegedly he did take the money and run and not donate it to charity like he was supposed to at a charity event, uh, according to Bryce Hall anyway, so. I mean, imagine running a charity event and pocketing all of the charity money. That right there is just insane. You have to be a special kind of creature to do that. All right, everyone, charity event, charity event, give me my pocket money, uh, charity money. Come on, everyone. Yep, that's right. It's going straight to Charity Cancer Research. Oh, what's this? Oh, thank you very much, sir. A check for $25,000. Nice one. I'll go and post this right now to the charity. Two seconds. Yeah, I'm going. Absolute abomination, honestly. So that obviously caused some controversy around Austin's name, which probably put a lot of strain on the family, but not just that, his social gloves event. Once again, Austin McBroom was being sued by at least seven or eight people. It was basically Austin McBroom's boxing event where he brought on a bunch of influencers to fight each other, and the influencers claim that they still have not been paid. I'm not sure about now, but at the time, no, they haven't been. Some of the contestants say they have not yet been paid the amounts they were promised, and may not until a legal battle concludes. Not just that, but McBroom is being sued by the media company he passed partnered with. This guy is just out of luck, isn't he? He's just taking all the wrong decisions in life here. Media company LiveX Live is suing McBroom and his company, SGP, seeking $100 million in damages. The lead attorney representing LiveX Live, Jeffrey Katz, told Insider that the money made by the event won't meet the expenses and contracts incurred by McBroom and that the whole event was built on a stack of lice. I mean, that's one thing we know McBroom is good at, is, is lying. So. so you can see the amount of financial pressure this would put on a marriage. I mean, the guy was just making too many poor financial decisions too quickly. But ladies and gentlemen, what did Austin McBroom do to try and take control of his financial situation? Well, he tried, uh, tried getting involved with OnlyFans. <laughs> runs a family channel and he's trying to get involved with OnlyFans models. I mean, that is just wild right there. That is just insane. He was literally going through Instagram looking for OnlyFans models, trying to assign them to his agency. And you can see one of the DMs here he sent to the OnlyFans models. My bad for the random DM. Are you signed to an agency? No, I think agencies are predatory scams run by corny men who think they can involve themselves in women's business. Oh, damn lol. Sorry for you feel that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
that. <laughs> guy just can't fucking spell, man. The guy's just got great grammar, isn't he? I do agree that majority of people in the space are nobodies that just outsource a random team. My background in social media, YouTube, Snapchat, and all of the above, along with having a strong team. So we know how to grow and monetize YouTube channels and Snapchat channels. Snapchat is now paying better than YouTube, and most don't even know. But again, we offer more than just only fan chatters. I just reached out to open a door, no pressure at all. By the way, we do no contracts, that's how confident we are, lol. And if you are ever unhappy, you're more than welcome to walk away. We can't hurt you, only help. When I google your name, all I see is articles about you losing your house, cheating on your wife, and scamming fans who entered some giveaway. So yeah, I'm good. And that's spot on! He couldn't afford his rent or anything, so he was literally going around and messaging OnlyFans bottles. <laughs> It's just mad, isn't it? Oh, the guy is just, the guy is just on a whole new level of just creature. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, all the things I've just listed probably put a lot of strain on their marriage, the infidelity, the scamming, the losing money all the time. It's just ridiculous. So with that said, if I had to give them any advice, it would be to not get into a relationship for at least the next two years. Just spend time uh, learning about yourself. Spend time learning about the new you. Try to find out what makes you happy as an individual and really try to work on yourselves to be better people. I swear to God, if I come on Instagram now in a couple of weeks and I see that Austin McBroom is already dating another woman. All hope is lost. I really think you guys need to take the time to spend time apart, uh, work on yourselves, think about what's best for the kids, and really just kind of work on your own individual grinds. Uh, okay, I think that's probably the best thing you guys can do. And definitely not hold any animosity or hate in your heart for anything that happened in the past. Try to move forward and be the best version of yourselves and try and develop yourselves to really, to really be comfortable with being alone for the next two years and learn to love yourself. Because once you do that, you'll be ready for the next relationship. And the other thing I would say as well, don't go out looking for love. Love will come to you when you least expect it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, baby. We're on the grind. And uh, for you guys at home as well, everything I just said goes to you guys as well. Just work on your own individual grinds and try to level yourselves up and find your own inner happiness because it is there. All right, see you all in the next one. Peace. You bad, bro? Uh, yeah. I said, tell me what you mad for. Uh, you bad, bro? Uh.